Hey everybody, it's me, your girl Keisha. Like, share, subscribe, comment below uh, on this video. Make sure you definitely like. Even if you don't subscribe to me, make sure you like this video. Make sure you're telling people you like me, or at least share it. You know, I know, I know you, I know you unsolved people out there. Y'all, y'all, y'all fans. Come on now, y'all. We show your girl some love. Okay, so just like the title of the video, I'm in my car, by the way. My kids in the background. We are talking about. Um, the show unsolved mysteries now to give you a little bit of background i watched unsolved mysteries when i was a kid perhaps i shouldn't have been watching unsolved mysteries because it scared me half to death um it is a show that came on back in the 80s it started in the late 80s early and last for a while and i would watch it as a kid and it would be like you know robert stack with his trench coat on and he's like new york north carolina blah 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 went to the store and then they never came back and then there's ghost stories and then they had lost loved ones and then it was like perhaps you can solve a mystery didn't that creepy music do 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 yeah that show used to freak me i used to have nightmares about the show but i couldn't stop watching like it was just so riveting in the way it was done unsolved mysteries is the patriarch of true crime true crime shows we wouldn't have no ID channel. We wouldn't have no crime TV. None of that. We wouldn't even have court TV. I believe it wasn't for Unsolved Mysteries. They 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 paved the way for crew crime. I mean, they even have true crime conventions now. But for a lot of us, we got started on Unsolved Mysteries. I used, there's an Unsolved um, website that uh, you you can and they talk about the, the cases and the updates. Um, also, Web Sleuths. I used to be part of Web Sleuths community. I just love true crime, and, and it all started, for me, with Unsolved Mysteries. So, Unsolved Mysteries, they used to come on Lifetime. They've had um, reruns pop up on different channels. You can watch the reruns on YouTube. But the classic, you know, nothing's better than the classic. But, you know, it's a modern age, so Netflix did, brought back un Unsolved Mysteries. Um, they had a volume one which had like six or seven episodes and it was excellent and, it, and that came on like months ago and so now they came with volume two which is a six episodes so we're going to talk about the first episode which is about jack wheeler now this dumbfounded me i had never heard of the murder of jack wheeler jack wheeler was a businessman um from here in the united states uh he worked in the military he was a decorated war veteran he helped uh, the Vietnam Veterans Museum put up in the 80s. Shout out, thank God, because that's where my uncle is at. Uh, he was a CEO for many different companies. Uh, CEO of Mother, Mad Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Uh, he worked in the State Department. He worked for the SEC. Uh, he knew people like the uh, assistant deputy of the Navy. And he worked in the Reagan administration and both of the... Bush administrations and and the last job that he had he was a CEO for a company called Meter Metri it's spelled M I T R E I don't, I'm not quite sure I'm not going to butcher it but M I T R E he was a CEO um this man was found dead on a landfill pile and the only reason they found him is because the landfill was about they about to bulldoze it and somebody knows somebody was up there other than that if somebody would have noticed that they would have bulldozed that body and nobody probably would ever found him. But so then the police started to trace his whereabouts. Um, they found out, by the way, that he had died through blunt force trauma. So somebody obviously hit him on the head. The police have been very mum about certain details and whereabouts. But there is video surveillance of camera of him in a parking garage saying that his briefcase was stolen, his phone was stolen, he had one shoe on. He was in the video you watch on some mysteries, he was acting very uh skittish i mean you could tell that either something had spooked him or something was just wrong with his mental state maybe um especially one shoe on and, and and he told the lady he wasn't drunk and and then there's other sightings and video of him you know walking around where he worked at and went to a pharmacy and people were like they offered to give him a, a cab offered to get him some help and he refused and he would just walk off you know so he had a history of bipolarism and he, and he obviously was on, you know, he, he things that he experienced in Vietnam, um, his wife, they did interviews with his family members and some friends, and obviously that he had some sort of mental health issues. But the way on the video, it's just a mystery, you know, as to maybe somebody got a hold of him. I don't know. But 
for this to happen to someone that was a CEO and a high up and you would think you would hear more about this case put out there and the fact that I had never heard of this case before and like I said this happened like 2010 it wasn't that long ago I just dumbfounded me to somebody to work inside a government administration the Bush administration and have connections and it just like this case just kind of like it, they were showing news clips when it first hit but then after that it is it is died away like I don't know if that's on purpose or sometimes you know your family really has to push the issue but unsolved mysteries has that case they're on the case okay uh so unsolved mysteries you know they they presented showed all the video footage of what happened they're still looking for more leads and and I just a poor guy I don't know what again there's you can go to reddit there's lots of theories and maybe he was being chased by somebody uh perhaps he knew too much I, I don't I don't I don't know. Usually I form an opinion early about what happened to somebody, but for this one I, I may have to go rewatch it again because I uh, and do more research because again, Unsolved Mysteries can only do so much in like forty minutes, forty, forty five minutes, but I've never heard this case before. And I'm intrigued as to where he was going that day and why he looked so dish I'm I'm intrigued. So I definitely advise you to look into it as well um but jack wheeler yes episode one came long and strong on unsolved mysteries they was coming they was coming for it so i encourage people you know to to do your own digging that's what i wanted when unsolved mysteries is always about doing your own digging i've looked up so many cases so do your own digging so jack wheeler yes i mean it is definitely a mystery if i find out more if there's some kind of updates or something i'll definitely post the second case we're going to talk about is one that I, I feel I know a lot about because I at least heard of it. I hadn't researched it in a long time because it has been pretty much dead. It's the, the, the case of um, Lester Eubanks, who is an escaped fugitive. He killed a 14-year-old girl by the name of Mary Ellen Diener. And um, he shot her because apparently he was trying to um, assault her. Um in an inappropriate way i won't go into but he was apparently trying to assault her this guy had a reputation he was like 26 27 years old when this happened and then they her and her sister went to the laundromat to do laundry and then she had to go get some change and then she walked around the corner and i guess that's when this dude snatched her up this lester eubank snatched her up and um shot her like i you know it's it's very tragic very sad and very tragic so Eubanks, he they they trace the gun back and it goes back to him and then he ends up going to prison. He was supposed to get the he was supposed to get the death penalty, but he didn't. Somehow in the state of Ohio, the death penalty was suspended, so he just got locked life in prison. And and again, there's a lot online lying about this case, and the family still wants justice because this man I don't know what was going on in Ohio, why people, but apparently the prisoners, some prisoners for good behavior were allowed to have certain privileges. They could go outside the prison, work outside the prison. This dude, it just seemed like he worked the system. Like he was a hustler. He was obviously an intelligent man. He wasn't no dummy. He was just, you know, violent. And so they would let these prisoners go shopping for Christmas. They took these prisoners to a mall and let them shop and be like, with no supervision, just go shop. Y'all, y'all, y'all go shop. We'll come pick you up in like three hours. What? That's crazy. So, yeah, he escaped. Like, the dude escaped. And in order for him to escape like that, of course, he had help. That's what outraged me the most. That this man then killed, shot and killed this 14-year-old who had her whole life ahead of her. He's a brother. This little girl's a sister. And this dude apparently was known as like the neighborhood weirdo. We've all had weird dudes in the neighborhood. And he had previously been been in trouble for another case of messing around with some girl, a sexual assault case. So apparently this guy had some kind of issues, okay? And instead of his family turning him in, apparently right before he escaped, he had a whole, he had a visitors like every week visiting him. Like his cousin, a bunch of people. They really elaborate who was visiting him. But I'm sure that in order for him to escape so cleanly, he had to have family or someone helping him. And that's the outrage there. It's just like, you know, and then they went to talk to his father and then his father had gave somebody information that the son was working somewhere. And, and 
you know, and then years later it comes out like his cousin, his deceased cousin, had a had a wife that apparently he was you can read between the lane you can read between the lines in Unsolved Mysteries. He apparently he was messing with his 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 cousin's wife. Okay, let's just put it this way. So apparently he moved in with her with California. She gets sick of his shit because apparently he's aggressive and he's a bully. Probably more than that. He probably was whooping her ass or something. I'm just going to elaborate. I don't know this for a treat, but I'm trying to read between the lines of Unsolved Mysteries and what I've read online. So she apparently dropped a dime on him and tells the, the FBI, like, well, yeah, he was living with me, blah, blah, blah. But he did left. He, he was working at some company under some assumed name, and he left. And then apparently this man has, has family in Alabama, even here in Texas. They all over the place. So for 40 years, this man, for 40 years, has escaped justice. His son even, update, his son even came forward last year and gave a DNA sample. But apparently, there's a federal law where you can't use familial DNA. Like, they've been using family DNA to catch all these serial killers and these crazy people out here who have escaped the law. But apparently, there's a federal law where they can't use familial DNA to, to trace down people. So he's out here some somewhere. And then it, it turns out that he was arrested, like pulled over by the police one time. The 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 police didn't even file the arrest records and the records right right. So there was nothing in the system saying that this man was a fugitive for years. For years. So for years he was he's out there like living his best life, child, living my best life. And how he has flown underneath under the radar for so long. You know, just speaks to the the stupidity of people covering for their messed up ass relatives. Like, like I'm just going to call it like I see it. I said what I said. And it's just a tragedy. Because I know if my relative did, if my cousin did some shit like that, my brothers did some shit like that, I'd be like, don't come to me because I'll snitch on you. I have a high sense of justice. You murdering kids, you killing women, you sexual assault. Anything like that, molesting, I, don't come to me and tell me that you did. You know, if you if you bees in the trap, you know, you you doing your thing, you out there selling, selling a little woo-woo-woo or whatever, okay, I might be like, all right, dude, ain't none of my business. But if you're actively out there hurting people, especially young people or children, you out there just, you know, beating up women, uh, abusing animals and kids, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I draw the line at that. You know, I, I can't. You, you, I can't, I can't, I can't mess with you then. Like, I, I, I can't. You know, I understand the hood code and don't be snitching and all that. I'm a grown-ass woman. Like, I, I can't, because I couldn't imagine if somebody would hurt my children and they would have family members that would cover for them. I, it, 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 would, it would tear me up inside. Like, I wouldn't know what I would do if somebody would hurt my kids, first of all. Second of all, I, I mean, the idea that somebody's hiding this person or help hiding this person. So he's out there somewhere. I mean, he, he's this man is out out here somewhere living an assumed life. I'm assuming my theory is shacked up with some woman somewhere that knows the truth, probably taking care of his ass, and he's probably working under the table, working side jobs. By now, um, he's like 60-something years old, so he's, he's old enough and smart enough to where he can just go in the populace and just lay low. He probably, he probably had some other kids by now, grandkids, and he probably somebody granddaddy, a whole granddaddy out there. So I don't know, you know, look up these cases. And uh, if you know anything, you've seen anything, definitely um, I'm going to try to add some links. Uh, again, the FBI is looking for this man. Same thing with Jack Wheeler. People's looking for evidence. I don't know what to think about that case. Like I said, I don't really know. Um, but, yeah, those are the two episodes of Unsolving. And I'm going to talk about two more episodes later. But I just thought I'd share those two with you. I don't. I didn't see many people on YouTube doing Unsolved Mysteries. But I, maybe I'm not looking hard enough. But, yeah, that's my show. Y'all check it out. Netflix. So, anyway, y'all, like, share, subscribe, comment. Uh, and uh, remember, your girl is going to be watching TV for you and reporting back. So, y'all have a good day. Peace.